Welcome back. The People's Democratic Party has listed the manifest incompetence of the administration of President Mohamed Bari and his failure to lead from the front as a responsible factor for Nigeria's failure to check the spread of COVID-19. The PDP raises the alarm following the continual rise in COVID-19 cases and deaths in Nigeria. It said this could have been curtailed if the nation had a competent, proactive and transparent leadership with the capacity to articulate a quick national response to the pandemic. And joining us to discuss this is Bengal Nitilo and Bolaba, both political analysts via Skype. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Benny. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Good the show evening, tonight. Good evening, Mr. Bolaba. Good evening, Bengal. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. All right, let's get the show on the road, gentlemen. Now, let's cons considering the blame of the opposition, would you say this blame solely lies on the regime of President Mahmoud Buhari, or is this a perpetual abysmal leadership from the get-go? Well, Abba, let me start with you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I really must say it is imperative to say as an analyst at this juncture that I don't know of any liberal democracy on the face of the earth where the opposition party eulogizes the ruling party, or where the opposition party sings the praise of the ruling party. The opposition party, customarily, as the phraseology of the name indicates, opposition party must lambast, criticize, and rubbish the ruling party. Having stated that axiom of liberal democracy, or that, uh, that fact of liberal democracy, let's now come to the specific issue that the PDP has raised. Yes. The, the PDP, for me, is only living to its status as the official opposition party of the nation. And it is incumbent on the PDP to grill the incumbent party, the ruling party, grill them, and grill all the chieftains of the party. So I, I, I'm really happy to have had the PDP saying this, not so much, because if we want to look a little bit backward, at the history of the PDP, not so much because they did perform, but you know what? They have gotten the electoral comeuppance of the Nigerian sovereign, the Nigerian electorate, because they were voted down. So I want to celebrate the PDP for rightfully doing its duty as the official opposition party of the rep. Well, now, back on it, you know, the, the PDP were in power for about 16 years. Now, w would you say that this government has failed to lead from the front, um, which is what is largely responsible for Nigeria's failure to check the spread of COVID-19, as alleged by the official oppositional party, the PDP? Uh, well, um, if you look at the COVID-19 itself, let's just take the roots globally. And um, let's start with global picture of things. Um, you can see how it has um, exposed globally uh, for most society, even the, the best liberal democracies, it has exposed the inefficiencies of politicians in being proactive to make decisions timely. It has exposed how weak most of the healthcare systems are globally. It has also exposed the social behavior of humans on the planet as well. So there are several layers. Um, you, you want to talk about America, you want to talk about Italy, you want to talk about United Kingdom. It has exposed a whole lot of things, a lot of realities to the world. And when we now come back home, it's even worse in the sense that what we have seen happening with our management of um, COVID-19 is a function of uh, the decay in our healthcare system over the years. So it's not something that happened four years ago. It's not something that happened five years ago. It's something that has been happening right from the 80s. And it kept on from one government to the other. It kept on decaying. So let's now come back to the specific about the issue of Nigeria and COVID-19. 
The issue is the response time. You know, the thing about a virus is, if the virus goes ahead of you, then you are in trouble. Nigeria did not make a decision timely enough about locking down the airspace. And that was where the trouble started from. We hesitated in shutting down our international airport. Number two, we also, even while we had not shut it down, we didn't put enough quarantine procedures in place. We were just allowing people to come into the country, just check their temperatures, and allow them pass. What we would, we would have done, even at the time we have not locked the airspace, all the flights that were coming from the high risk region, like the UK, the US, Italy, and all those other places, we will have, what we will have done is to run tests on everybody coming into the country. And when we find anyone positive, it's either you isolate or quarantine. If you want to quarantine, quarantine just simply means they can be, uh, you can be separate them from the sick people where they can be either in their house, you know where they are, so, which means effective and efficient contact tracing. It could just be another facility as well. All the ones that are tested positive, that need to be treated, isolated, will never put all those procedures in place. And wow. that was what led to the issues that we had. Okay, now we didn't put the airspace in time, which means shutting down the international airport. But while we did not even do that, we did not put a process in place to process every single passenger coming from those high-risk regions. And okay. that was where the problem started from. Okay, Gwelaba, um, uh, Gwelaba, let me, yeah. Benga, Benga, hold your thoughts there. I'll come back to you in a bit. Uh, uh, now, now, Gwelaba, talking about the, the competence of this government, its proactiveness and, and capacity to articulate a quick national response to the pandemic, like Benga li rightly highlighted, how well would you say their response was and has been so far? Let me start by slightly, slightly, uh, differing in some context of facts, especially at the international level with Benga. That's okay. Benga used the examples of the incompetencies that we've seen from the United States of America to the United Kingdom, Italy. And he used it as the seeming general failure of liberal democracies in engaging with uh, the onslaught of COVID-19. I guess he must, without mentioning it, he must have just opposed the conduct of the governments of those nations with the conduct of China, especially how China managed it in the Hubei province, particularly in the city of Wuhan. But I want the world to know that some liberal democracies have also exemplified themselves as jurisdictions or polities managed by competent people. Typical example, Taiwan. Taiwan is so proximate to China, Taiwan ordinarily should be a province of China. As we speak, because they quickly acted, just like Benga, rightly, uh, rightly uh, uh, explained because they quickly acted in Taiwan as we speak. Taiwan is one of the very few jurisdictions or polities on the face of the earth where in the last one and a half to two weeks, there has literally been no single case of, of infection. You want me to shock you? Initially, initially, South Korea dropped the ball, but the government of South Korea quickly picked the ball, and you know what? They went massively. In fact, control, in fact, and they put in place policies that compromised some fundamental rights of citizens in a liberal democracy initially. Okay. And you know what? <laughs> South Korea, in the last three and a half weeks, conducted a general parliamentary election. And two weeks after the parliamentary election, there was not a single spike, not a spike, in the infection rate of COVID-19. 
We also have liberal democracies like New Zealand. We have liberal democracies like Greece, where a slim, nimble government led by people who are, who are scientifically savvy, who have initiative, who are creative, have been able to manage COVID-19. So COVID-19 does not have any potency more in liberal democracies in so much as the, gov the government is competent. Okay. All right. However, now, yes. I must say that I am on all fours with Benga on the incompetencies that have been manifested in Nigeria because from the moment the world had known that a pandemic was at large, I was actually joking on a radio program that I used to do every day then that Nigeria could not afford to refuse planes coming from China to land because Nigeria was a beggarly nation to China. All right. I really want to agree on all fours with Benga all right, that Benga, from the get-go, right. right. we let, did let, not handle it well. All right, let me, let me bring in Benga just a moment right now. I mean, I, I believe this incompetency and lack of proactiveness is prior to yeah. the pandemic we're all facing right now. Now, I want us to take a look at the okay. leadership, the leadership structure of Nigeria holistically, now away from just COVID-19, which just highlighted still and further gave credence to the fact that there's, there's a deficit of leadership in, in our country. Since Nigeria's return to democratic rule in 1999, Benga, which of the government would you say has been able to provide progressive leadership to Nigerians? Well, when you say progressive leadership, I only say Kobasaja. Maybe Yadua to some level. But the one that has been more effective and efficient in terms of leadership, uh, in terms of showing the will to rule and putting measures in place that has also shown, um, built some level of capacity for Nigerians over the years. For example, the debt, the debt forgiveness and a whole lot of other things that we've enjoyed. The strong foundations were laid over a period of time, even the cons reconsolidation of the banking system over the years. You talk about um, telecommunications, you talk about quite a whole lot of things that were done during that period that the likes of Yadua started building on. But there are some setbacks also during that period as well, leading to the period of um, GEJ, when you now started having uh, the subsidy scams started growing, and a whole lot of other uh, anomalies. Uh, the issue of um, restructuring, everybody has been shouting, power at the center, the issue of the resource control. So when you, when you look at over the years, I don't think we have had consistent leadership that builds on the the, uh, the positives of successive administration. Let me give you an instance. The Orosaya panel report, it took COVID-19 to set back the earnings and revenues of government. For government now need to know that they need to uh, cut down and prune all the agencies. Now they are going after the report because the setback of the pandemic created a global um, lockdown of the economy. So. Those are some of the, uh, these are the things that this same government has been shouting that when we come in, we're going to cut spending, we're going to cut this, but you started finding out agencies started increasing, ministries started increasing, while the Orosayo panel reports were just laying there in the archive. If those kind of things have been taken and looked into, some of the issues that we're having with, in terms of um, capital, capital, uh, um, working capital for capital funds, Again, all these um, overinflated expenditures, uh, the issue of 75% um, of our revenue we are spending it on, on paying interest. If all these things have been taken over the years, if we have had leadership, I don't think we'll be where we are. The, all the noise about, um, uh, what do you call it now, Re agricultural revolution that we're making about agricultural revolution, I don't think we are, the that we have shown Leadership in, in, in Nigeria is that today. Okay. All right, Benga. Shown itself. All right. we're, we're running, we're running out of time. I, I need to interject now, Benga. Quickly, Bolaba, uh, let, let's, go, let's go back a little bit. Still on the leadership issue in Nigeria, General Abdul Salami Abubakar retired, led the transition to democracy, and accordingly, a new constitution was adopted on May 5, 1999.
Now, many have blamed the 1999 Constitution to be the setback to our development as a nation. Do you agree with this? Benny. Yes, Mr. Bolaba. We don't have a perfect constitution like most other polities on the face of the earth. Yeah. And our constitution is fundamentally dystopic because it is a contradiction in terms. It's a constitution that ostensibly defines itself as a federal constitution, but organically defines one of the most powerful unitary presidentialism that the world ever has. Look at the kind of joke that President Trump was subjected to about two and a half weeks ago when he said he had all the powers in America. Indeed, some members of his party, some partisans of the Republican Party made him realize that the Constitution of America was not designed for the president to be omnipotent, and that they did not elect a king, not King Trump. <laughs> the irony is that in the case of Nigeria, we may not have elected a king, but our Constitution imposes a lot of powers in the presidency, that our president is even far more powerful than the most... The, our president is actually a tenured autocrat. And yet, the, the dysfunctionalism in, end in that constitution is not the greatest, is not the greatest problem that our polity has, or is not the greatest, um, the greatest danger that our polity is facing now. Now, the greatest danger that our policy is what is what is the greatest danger that our policy what what is the greatest danger the our, our policy the is lack, facing right now? It's the lack of initiative. The lack of creativity, the visionlessness of our political class, irrespective of party. That is why when I started out for this program, I was telling you that the, the, the two major parties are six and half a dozen. I don't see much difference <laughs> in All the right. quality yeah. okay. of the members of the All political class. All right, but we're out of time. I need to take quickly. I'm going I'm, to your reaction to, to a few things Bola said as we wrap up the, the show tonight. Well, 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 I agree with you. One of the one of our greatest albatross is the National Assembly that we have. America has taken certain elements out of their constitution, which they have amended over the years. The National Assembly that we have today is just a rubber stamp one. If we had a rubber, a National Assembly that is up and running over the years, the elements that put so much powers, for example, that the president had to control. Uh, has control over who appoints the IG, who appoints the ESC chairman, who appoints the INEC chairman, who appoints all the critical institutions that are supposed to be like uh, regulators, that are supposed to be an accountable, uh, stabilizing the democracy, all in the powers of the president. If we had the National Assembly over the years that take certain elements out of the Constitution, like the Land Use Act, all those things, and begin to work at amending all those things and pushing for them to be signed into law. I think we'll make progress on quite a whole lot of things, even if you cannot turn over all the elements of the Constitution. I, okay. I can't okay. agree with the Bola oh, about this. Okay, gentlemen, I'm, I'm still going to have you, both of you back on the show again. We need to continue this. We're out of time, unfortunately, tonight. I want to say thank you, Bola Oba and Benga Onitilo, both political analysts, for joining us and thank for you, your Bola. insightful contribution. Thank you, Thank you for the opportunity once again. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a quick break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. And there was my take. That the selfishness of our leaders will always leave me in a state of perplexity. You might ask why I say this, but from the time our great country became an independent nation, our leaders have put themselves above those they serve. Nigeria currently has over 4,000 COVID-19 cases and counting, whereas we had just a little over 2,500 cases this time last week. I believe the numbers are going to increase even more before we begin to record decreases, but I believe the numbers would help us put our situation in perspective. 
The government of Kogia and Cross River State are, in my opinion, acting irresponsibly in handling the state. Both states have maintained their COVID-19 free status despite being flagged by the NCDC Director General Chikwe Ekwazu for turning in a very low number of samples for testing. In fact, the Doctors' Association in Kogia have expressed fears that the consequences of not testing people for the COVID-19 may be too enormous to deal with. And I share in this belief too, this is not a time to play politics or any gimmicks employed by politicians in order to show that they really are working. Let us be transparent in our fight against this virus, in which has taken the lives of almost 300,000 globally. Nigeria holds a population of over 200 million. It will be a tragedy for our land if we lose more of our people to this virus simply because our leaders chose to feign ignorance and play politics with our lives. Again, it is quite unfortunate that corruption and the 1999 constitution have been blamed to be the setback to our development. But I want to say the ineptitude of the elected and weak institutions are the drawback for our country since the Fourth Republic in 1999. Isn't it a shame that in the last 19 years we can hardly boast of any outstanding political leaders, both at the executive and the legislative arm of the federal, state and local government levels, that could match the qualities or representation of its heroes past? In the last 19 years, we still can't see what the relationship between the executive and the legislative arm have done to impact positively on the well-being of the Nigerian masses. It is unequivocally clear that the quality of representation in government today is below what can improve the standard of living of the ordinary citizen and the country at large. It's high time for a complete and total overall of the system and its dysfunctional representatives. Nigeria needs and is deserving of leaders that are transformational, forward-thinking, transparent, truly educated, and energetic non-career politicians. And that's all for our show tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus, politics returns tomorrow, same time. And in the meantime, do stay safe.